we are now going to define exponential functions. And it's important to recognize what an exponential function is. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to talk about two different payment rates for the same job. So suppose that Pearson Publishing approaches you since you've finished our 1010 course and they ask you to proofread a single chapter of their next edition of the Sullivan book. And so th these are the two payment plans they offer you. Plan A is they will pay you $100 per error. Plan B says, well, we'll pay you $2 for the first error that you find and we'll double it for each additional error. And also, no matter what happens, if you find no errors, we'll give you one for no errors. Just for doing some work, we'll give you a buck. And so the question is, which of these two payment plans would you take? And so to help I do this, we're going to look at the following table that's already been created. So here's option A and option B for the number of errors. Notice that until about 10 errors, option A, except for it's zero, if you find one error, that's a lot better to have A than B. Two errors, same thing. But as we go, once we get to nine, even though it's still better to have option A, option B is catching up. And as soon as we hit 10, option B wins. 11 is getting quite a bit distant. And look at 20. And so now that we've seen the table, if you knew that there were between 10 and 20 errors in a given chapter, that needed to be found, and you, if you find them, they'd pay you this corresponding amount, you really want to stick with option B because it pays far better. Well, option B is an exponential model because it is 2 to the power, where the x is our input, and that's how many errors we found, which is why our 2 to the 0 is 1. And so here's the idea behind it and what we use to find our exponential functions is, is the base is the constant and the variables and the power. Now one more thing that you want to keep very straight is we're going to define an exponential function as f of x equals a to the x. This is our bare bones default exponential function and a couple of rules. x can be anything by definition. And so because it can be anything that means our domain is defined for an exponential to be from minus infinity to infinity. Unless, of course, we decide to put this as 1 over x up in the power, but we're not going to deal with those cases in 10 10. So as long as there's nothing funny going on with the power, we're just going to leave it alone and we're going to say domain is everything. But the catch is our a cannot be 1 because 1 to the 1st equals 1 to the 100th equals 1 to the minus 125 equals 1 to the millionth. And so it's useless. It's all 1. So a can't be 1 because it doesn't help us. It always has the same output. It's not 1 to 1. And that's going to be a problem later. It also can't be negative because we can't take a square root of a negative number and get a real number output. We can get it a complex number, but we can't get a real number. We only care about the real numbers. So for instance, if we let it be negative 2, I could choose to let x be 1 half, because that's between minus infinity to infinity, and this would come out as i square roots of 2, which we don't want, so it can't be negative. So it can't be this. Instead, it has to be greater than 0. It also can't be 0, because 0 to a negative power would be 1 over 0, and that's undefined. So for all of the functions that we're going to look at today, our a has to, can't be 1 and has to be strictly greater than 0. It can be a fraction, it can be a decimal, it just can't be 0. And that's our definition of a exponential 